Young Life. Young Let's, Life. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, YouTubers, happy little Friday. We're going to be doing um, some new things um, to keep this channel going, get more subscribers, do a lot of new things with this um, this new new subscription and YouTube channel that I got going on. So Shane from Optical Concepts Hawaii bringing you to, to you today, Fishy Profile Fridays. So with that being said, um, we're going to start doing this probably like every Friday or maybe every couple Fridays to do profiles on different types of fishes, cichlids, personal things that I know, that I breed, um, I have a good background with, um, nothing too extravagant that I don't know too much of, I mean, things that I know a lot about and things, maybe some things here and there that I don't know too much about. But let's try and get stuff rolling and try and look at things at a different perspective and start getting this rolling. So today's topic, today's fish is the live barrier guppy, the fancy guppy, not your typical mid dockers that's in the waters or your common ones that you find in the streams or those rankety dankety ones that you buy at the pet store as feeders. We are gonna get into fancy guppies, okay? So stay tuned. Here we have a 55, uh, 57 gallon drum. Um, it is not a uh, uh, water barrel or some kind of food grade barrel. This is actual um, round tubs that I particularly pick up from a local um, aquaponics store here. So just wanted to show you a little bit of the guppies thing. Guppies are very fairly easy. They're very um, not um, very high-tech or what is it um, sensitive fishes. They're very simple. They, very, they need very little requirements such as standing water um, nice surface area to evaporate all the ammonia and all the rubbish, the gases, some plants in there just to let the babies hide when they start to breed, and typical male and female. Okay, so let me try and get us some here. Hold on, let me find that. So yes, we're gonna try to start picking up some some guppies. So kind of look at that. So look. These are just your typical males. The male has um, much more brighter, extravagant colors, um, nice finishes. This is my Dumbo Mosaic Guppies. So these are the males. Um, I breed these guys. Um, I got them in from what you will call. Um, this is the female. Female has some coloration, but very fairly more on the plainer side. Tails um, on some fancy guppies, and then the on, especially on these mosaics, come out in the in the tail end of the patterning. So as you can see, a lot of them, a lot of guppies. Guppies are very, very, very easy to breed. Very simple. Let's get them back in the tub. So they're fairly easy to breed. Um, <coughs> they are live bearers, which means they do lay live, um, live fishes. They don't lay eggs. So let's um, talk about some breeding um, methods and stuff like that. Um, how I used to breed guppies was I used to have a stock tank with my male and my females all inside my that's my breeding tank um, <coughs> or breeding ponds in fact I used to have them in tubs too um, rubber made bins like 30 gallons you know 20 gallons um, I have them all um, even uh, what they call seamless pots um, those are the, usually the planter pots plastic planter pots without the holes in them at the bottom so they don't drain so we used to have a, quite a bit of them, about 30 to 40 of them. And what we used to do was, um, I'm going to show you here in just a bit, is that we used to actually put a bunch of them with a little bit of um, nausea grass, um, in other words, guppy grass, um, some anacris, or some foxtail. Um, probably even some java moss to kind of just let the fry hide out if, if some of the fries didn't drop through the pukas. We would also let them, which you will call, hide in the moss. So... Um, when we were doing that, we found it real easy because what would happen is with these net pots is that they would fall through the, the, the pukas and get released into the, the, the main pond. And that would be actually our grow-up pond for our fry. 
And uh, with that, we had a higher um, success rate with babies actually getting grown out um, and less mortality rates because there is some albino lines and some guppy lines that actually used to eat the babies. Um, some of us typically think, you know, typically think that guppies don't eat their babies. A lot of them do, you know, um, because the female, especially the female, because the female releases all these eggs one time, all these babies one time. You may count from anywhere from, tw you know, like I said, they can go up to 50. I mean, sometimes they can go up to 50 babies. Um, I've counted several batches that I had, some big mamas, real fatty girls that used to drop at least 40 to 50 fry. And they would just shrink up real fast. And But I would keep them in the pond. And the female would actually chase around the babies because she's so hungry. <clears throat> that she would end up eating some of the fry. So, we found out that with this way, we increased the success rate of the babies. Then we used to raise them up until maybe about a period of time till the males usually cut up really fast. You can really see the coloration in them as soon as they get to a certain size. So we used to yank the males and we used to separate the males and the females from each other. Um, I used to have only tank. I uh, used to only have tanks with females, and I used to only have tanks with males. And they would. That's how I would select the particular um, males and females that I wanted to keep, and the ones that I didn't want, because some of them would come out with um, some deformities or some colors that I didn't want. So I would pick out the ones that I did want, and the rest would go into what we call um, the community pond. And that was just the chop suey in Hawaii. We I, I call them the chop suey pond. And they used to increase and, you know, interbreed with one another. And then that would actually just be just, you know, feeder food for my other fishes and stuff like that. But that's also what we call culling. And they would go into the cull, the cull pond, put it in for the guys out in other states. So that's how I kind of used to do it. I used to have a net pot, let them, let the baby sink through and stuff like that. And, um... Fish flakes. Um, I used to use crushed fish flakes. Um, now I'm getting, now I'm getting to brine brine shrimp now. But um, back then I, I used to only hatch maybe like every three days. I used to hatch a new batch of brine shrimp, baby brine shrimp for it. I just leave them with the brine shrimp. Daphnia. I wasn't really good at raising Daphnia, but some I've been learning, and then the Daphnia has been coming out pretty good now. So hopefully now I can put some more into the start putting the babies with them guys and start letting them whack up the Daphne and start growing real fat much more faster um brine shrimp I, I like to I heard brine shrimp is a very good product and a very good live food to feed your guppies because it has a lot of nutrition inside and they grow they grow very high you know at a high rate I've heard many different controversial things with um using baby vitamins and using um using yeast using yeast and spirulina you know different types of things you know uh, green water algae those kind of things <laughs> I've heard a lot of things so but all in all that's how I've been raising my guppies guys um, some of this um, the, the net pots I use so this is uh, I think it's a 10 8 I'm not too sure I didn't really measure it but see how very small the pukas are which allows the fry to get through okay but it doesn't allow the, the the parents to get through. Some of the net pots that you may find that's in your local aquaponics stores, or even your local um your um hydroponic stores don't have these kind of things. Um, so th the mesh the mesh is pretty thin, so which kind of really helps with a lot of the fry getting through. It helps the fry get through, so it goes down into the main tub where they can grow out and then what I do is I take out the male and the female <clears throat> I actually take out the male and I leave the female in there I only leave the females and I let her release all the babies up to three births and then from there is when I start to cull whatever I don't want and whatever I want um, in the meantime feeding them brine shrimp trying to get them to grow as fast as possible hatching new bright um, new baby brine every couple of days but now I got I got this little hatchery that I just made so that's gonna be another method for me to start doing it um as you guys just saw my tubs um, it's actually in my back of my house I'm moving those kind of things down to the bottom where I have a little bit more access to it it's not as windy there's not too much leaves 
you know, these kind of things take a lot into effect. There's a lot of big trees behind my house, so there's a lot of leaves that's going into the stuff. So it's a lot of cover. It's not getting enough sunlight. The water's kind of too cold. Guppies don't like cold water. They like a little bit more warmer water. Um, so, but in overall, they can survive in the colder water, but I prefer them to be in a little bit more warmer water. A little bit more warmer water, they actually let it grow at a little faster rate, and um, they don't get like clamp fins or you know uh, fin rot, fungus. You know they don't stress out too much, so which is pretty good when I get um, when I get them into the the front side. So a little bit more sunlight coming in on the other end. Oh, sorry, you guys. You know what? Let me switch my arms because you know what. Sorry for all the background stuff back here. I got Minion back here cruising with me, you know, hanging out with me and doing my thing. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy these talks, you know, and I hope you guys enjoy my channel and whatnot. Um, kind of things. I'm going to try to spruce up some things, show you some of my, um, my fishes and whatnot, my guppies that I've raised, some of the guppies that I do have and whatnot. But anyway, stay tuned for the next channel or the next episode. Happy Aloha Friday, everybody. Chee-hoo. Young life. Young Let's life. go. Let's go.